In today's video, I head to a cold canary wharf to use both long exposures and time blending techniques to capture this image. So you join me in this video down at North Greenwich overlooking Canary Wharf. It is probably one of my favorite views in London. It's somewhere I've shot before and it's a great place to see this blend of the modern super high-rise buildings of Canary Wharf with all these much older like townhouse style buildings um, in there as well. And I've wanted to come back here and shoot this for some time um, and I've picked a really good evening for it. We've got great cloud detail, we've got lots of good light. I think I may have arrived slightly too late to get the light on the building itself. But that's not a problem because we have got lovely colours in the sky, we, the sun is still just about over the horizon. So the shots that I actually want to get here, I want to do a couple of things. One, I want to try an extremely long exposure. Now I've got a uh, Lee Filter Super Stopper in there, that's a 15 stop ND filter I think, and that's giving me an exposure time at f8 of eight minutes. Eight minutes long, that's huge. And I think that's what that's going to do is give an amazing amount of like streaking slow shutter effect to all the clouds as they're passing over the top of Canary Wharf, which I think is going to look really good because obviously the buildings themselves are completely static. So having that blend of those static buildings with the clouds streaking over, I think is going to be really, really nice. So I've got that set up already. It's going now. I'm currently at six minutes. So I just need to basically play the waiting game and see how that shot turns out. Of course, it is very late in the day, so six minutes ago when I started taking the shot, it was a little bit brighter. So I think I'm probably going to leave it to maybe eight and a half, nine minutes just to kind of take account for the dropping light levels. But the other thing that I want to do here, maybe, maybe, we'll see how it goes, is do some time blending because right now it's bright enough that none of the lights are on in the buildings. It all looks a little bit dark over there. But my hope is that I'm going to be able to wait here until night falls, which probably isn't too long from now, it is middle of the winter. And I'll be able to take another shot with all those lights in as well. And then I can blend my shot taken in daylight with my shot taken at night and hopefully get a really nice effect. The problem with doing an exposure this long though is that You've got no idea if it's going to come out. Like, I, I don't know if I, if it's been windy enough that it's maybe shaking the camera and it's going to be blurry. I don't know whether it's definitely going to expose properly. And that's a lot of time to waste on a photo which isn't going to come out. Fingers crossed. So the light is steadily dropping. Um, of course, the white balance is changing too. So I'm taking a few extra shots, playing around with the filter for a slow shutter and without it trying one at the moment which is about to stop with the big stopper that's just a 10 stop ND so that's letting me get an exposure of 1 minute 20 seconds which actually looks really nice I like that a lot yeah I'm really pleased with that it does mean that I need to completely lock in this uh, composition if I move the camera now then when I come to take more shots when the building lights are on they're not going to connect up so I'm not gonna be able to blend those very easily so the shot I've got now is the shot I'm staying with I'm just gonna keep on shooting until the light goes and the lights come on it's getting cold though very cold I am really fucking cold now, like really cold. I hope this is worth it. Otherwise I've been spending hours standing next to the river for no real payoff. <laughs> so I'm really keeping my fingers crossed, partly because it helps to keep them warm. But I can see that it's getting a lot darker. The lights that are going on in the buildings 
and I've shot through most of the sunset. And as the sun has gone down, the light has hit different parts of the buildings and the sky's changed from blue to orange to like a deep purpley color. So I do think that if I keep on shooting, when I get back home, I will have a whole load of photos, all of which will look pretty different. And hopefully individually, they may look pretty good as well. Then I just need to figure out how to blend them together to get a nice time blend. But I really don't know if what I want is gonna actually work. So I did end up making it back and I did finally get warm and that was lovely. Um, and I've already gone through these pictures and I've had a look at what I've taken and I've also done some edits and I am really, really pleased with how this came out. So I do think it was worthwhile me going and getting that cold. Um, now the main image that I, I settled on using was the very, very long eight minute exposure and that is this one here. Now, as you can see straight out of camera, this doesn't look very appealing. It's obviously quite dark, the, the white balance is all off, possibly due to the slight colour cast that you might get from using the filters, um, and it's just a very, very uninspiring shot. Um, nothing that I would particularly bat an eyelid as it is, but of course that's straight out of camera and in Capture One there's a lot of stuff that I can do to make sure that that comes back to life. Um, and so this is what I've been able to do just in Camera Raw so far. Obviously that's a dramatic change between that and this. Um, mostly that's down to the white balance. I've done some things there. I've changed around the exposure. You can see the sliders here. The high dynamic range tool has been important because a lot of the highlights was, were in the sky. Um, and I've also lifted the shadows um, in the building somewhat. The great thing about Capture One though is that you can also work in layers. And as you can see, I've got quite a few going on here. If we turn these on and off, um, what's that doing? That is a grad filter on the sky. It's a subtle shift, but if you just have a look when I'm flicking this on and off, that that is just helping bring out some more texture in that sky. In that will just be a bit of an exposure reduction. And I think I slightly boosted the contrast as well. Uh, next layer is the same thing, just bringing that in the um, in a river, just darkening that down, which just helps bring the eye more towards the central strip of the scene. Uh, layer three, I decided not to use for some reason. Layer four is a little bit of a boost on the small houses in front because they were just falling a little bit too much into shadow. So this is just an adjustment brush, bringing back those buildings just a little bit. Um, and then the top two are both um, sort of color toning layers that again is great using in Capture One because you can, rather than just applying a whole preset color tone to an image, you can apply it to a new layer. And then as you can see, I've adjusted the opacity of those layers and that lets you blend different tones together in a single image in a way that you can't do with Lightroom. So if I just flick these on and off individually, you can see what that's doing. It's adding a nice amount of contrast and same with this one on the top. That's just bringing in some different color tones. Again, shifting it slightly from the green tint into more of a purpley tone, which I think really suits the sunset vibe that we're going for. Now, at this point, I brought that into Photoshop along with some of the other shots that I wanted to include. Um, I can't remember exactly which ones they were. Uh, I think maybe one of these ones down here, because obviously these are the ones that have got their building lights on. Much later in the evening, the lights all went on and that's when the buildings came to life. That's why I hung around for that length of time. Um, this is one of the last ones I took in the day. I don't like this one quite as much. So I think it was, I'm pretty sure it's one of these. And again, I just adjusted the white balance and the exposure a little bit on this one, just to help those lights blend a little bit easier with my shot. Um, and there was another one I think I blended, maybe this one. In fact, I think it was because particularly around here on the edges of these buildings, as the sun went down, we just started to get these extra little blasts of orange lighting up some of the sides of the buildings. And I thought that looked really, really nice. So I wanted to bring those into the image as well. The whole point is that it's time blending. So I'm taking different shots at probably I think a couple of hours apart. But in that time, the sun was setting, and so you're getting a very, very different scene each time you take an image. Um, obviously, all of those are going to be layered on top of this base image. As you can see, this ended up being 8 minutes, 34 second exposure. That's huge. Um, so let's go and take a look at those in Photoshop and see what I've done there. 
So here is basically our final finished image. And this has been built up from that initial base layer, which we can just see by itself here. And then we'll go through, I'll turn on the other layers so you can see what it is that I've done. Uh, firstly, of course, the building lights. Now, I was saying when I was out on location that I need to make sure that my image is locked down so that when I'm taking the next shot, I can easily layer that on top. Now, unfortunately, I did move the camera a little bit um, when I was putting on and taking off the filters. I think I slightly moved the zoom range, which meant that this image didn't uh, exactly fit over the top of my base image. So I have had to do some work um, on that. If we have a look at that by itself, we can see that that's basically all of that image that I'm using. Um, so if we have a look at these cut lines here, what I've had to do is basically slice the image up and move certain parts around. I've had to resize it. And then as you can see, I've masked out a lot of where I don't want this image to appear. I only want really those lights coming through. That's why I took that shot. Um, so it was a little bit more tricky to line everything up than I thought, but that's okay because now it's in there, it's done. And I think it already looks really, really interesting. Uh, the next thing I did is turned on those sunlight beams. And again, if we flick that on and off, we can just see how it's giving that extra kiss of orange light up the side of the building, particularly on this HSBC and the Barclays one. I think that looks really, oops, wrong one. I think that looks really, really nice. Uh, and again, if we look in that folder, I've had to mask in a lot of stuff. I've had to move things around. Um, I have also given those a slight brightness and saturation boost just to help them pop out a little bit more uh, and groups those all in the sunlight folder. Now, uh, next up, I did a little bit of a levels shift just to help bring in a little bit of extra contrast. And then, actually, I'm not sure I may have turned that off. Let's just keep that off for now. The next thing I did was use LUTs or lookup tables. And these are similar to presets and filters in that they give a, a certain color toning um, look to your image. But again, like I was saying in Capture One, I don't like using those at their maximum value. So if we just go into this folder, and I'll just turn them on a second. What I've done, I've actually, as you can see, I've done four different ones and each one applies a very small amount. Um, I've changed the opacity down to 28% on this one, down to 16 on this one, and 35 on this one. So if we just turn these on and off, each one is a very, very, very subtle shift. You'll have to be paying close attention if you actually want to see what difference this is making. Leave that one on. And this one's giving a slight more blue shift to some of the buildings, which, you know, now I'm turning this on and off. I'm not even sure I like. I oh, know, wait, I see. Other way around, it's removing that blue shift and it's adding a slightly warmer tone to the buildings, which I do like. So yeah, we'll leave that on. Uh, and then finally, look up four is a little bit more contrasty, just gives a bit more punch to the scene. Um, so I really like that. Now, if we turn the whole lot on and off, obviously then it makes a bit more of a dramatic difference. It's easier to see what effects those, um, those filters are having. I'm going to close that folder. Next up, a bit of a hue saturation shift. Again, this is subtle. Uh, just shifting some of those oranges slightly more into a deeper orange. Um, they were a little bit too on the yellowy side, making them look a little bit washed out. And... Uh, finally, a dodge and burn layer, which is only, again, quite a subtle shift, but I've just done a little bit of darkening on the edge of this Barclays building, a little bit on this uh, the Canary Wharf Tower, which I can't remember the name of it. I know it's like the most important one there, but I can't remember at all. But uh, if we flip that on and off, we can just see what that's doing. And that's basically it. It was not as easy to piece together as I thought, but... It has come together in the end um, and I'm really, really pleased with the effect because you get that shift from the evening light going all the way through to the nighttime with those actual building lights on. And as such, you get a really nice even image overall. I'm very, very pleased with it. But the other thing I did want to show is that there was another image that I took and that was, that was this one here. Now, this one already looks a lot more dramatic because of so much more blue and cloud detail in that sky. You see those streaks. It's 
got so much more going on, um, which I thought was really, really interesting. So I decided to bring that in to Photoshop as well. But the great thing is by working in layers this way, you don't need to start from scratch and do the entire image again. It's simply a case of swapping out your background layer. So if I turn that layer on, suddenly that's what we get. We get those dramatic clouds, but we still keep those building lights on and all the other work that we've done is still in place. Um, I would need to do a little bit of shifting around, I think, with some of the lights if I was going to do this properly. But So I'm a little bit in two minds about this version of the shot. In fact, I have exported both versions and I sent them to several friends overnight. And the reason I'm recording this video next morning is because I wanted to sleep on it and see how I feel. Because initially, it's this shot that's got the more dramatic clouds that appeals more, it has a bit more impact. You look at it and go, oh, wow, that's an interesting effect. I see what's happened there. But that's kind of not the point of this scene. And I actually feel that these clouds are so dramatic that they actually make the whole image look a little bit too busy. They take away a little bit from the buildings. Your eye doesn't know where to go. You look at the buildings and you look at the clouds and it's, it's it doesn't have a lot of balance to it. Whereas I feel the original shot with that very, very long exposure, you get that amazing blend of the static buildings with this very ethereal, dreamlike quality to those clouds as they're streaking away over the sky. And that, I think, gives a lot more balance to the scene. It gives your eye somewhere to go. You know that the focus of this image now is the buildings. Your eyes aren't drawn then to the clouds. You take it all in as a whole. And I think that's why I prefer this image. So this is the one that I am sticking with as the shot from the evening. Um, of course, if you disagree, then I would very much appreciate your comments. So um, do please let me know in the comments below, is it image one, this one, or is it image two, this one? Uh, definitely would appreciate if um, everyone else disagrees with me, but uh, yeah, that's how I'm seeing it so far. But that does bring me to an end of this video. Hopefully it's been interesting in seeing how I would go about putting a shot like this together, doing both long exposures and time blending like this. Uh, it has been fun putting it together and I'm really glad that all that time spent freezing cold in Canary Wharf wasn't for nothing. Um, but if you have enjoyed this, do please make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe as well if you don't already. It genuinely is a huge help to the channel. Uh, and I will see you next time.